time is now 6.30. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. John Pickwitz? Here. Stephanie Newman? Here. Lee Gorman? John Cabella? Here. Adrian Ferrari? Here. Terry Stalborn? Leave the door. Yeah. He's shielded. Uh, clearly, let me know he was not going to be here. Uh, in his absence, I would like to extend voting rights to Linda the door for the evening. Can you accept? Yes. Good. Our first order of business is the review of the minutes from the last meeting. There's one immediate question I would like to make. Uh, where it came to citizen participation. Correct uh, spelling of Matt's last name is R A D A N T. that since we can get that clarified that we uh, table this until our next meeting before we can review the report to find out exactly who can impact uh, the second and who will uh, actually make the motion to so confirm. So I'm going to motion that we table this till our next meeting. So moved. Right. Do I have a second? Second. Right. Motion made by Ted to table this till the next meeting, seconded by uh, Tom, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Good extension. Uh, uh, at, uh, at this time, I will uh, welcome the uh, selectmen to the microphone and I'd uh, like to just kind of give us a little bit of insight to our first item of new business, which is to consider and act upon a resolution recommending an appropriation and borrowing authorization for improvements to the WPCA North treatment plant at a cost not to exceed four million dollars. Thank you very much. I uh, just wanted to review what we've done so far with the recommendation from our um, bonding parties. Uh, last night the um, Planning and Zoning Commission met and they did the same thing to uh, allow that to go forward. You're next on the, on the uh, ticket. If you have any questions about what particular items there are for the treatment plant uh, and the cost cannot exceed $4 million, if you have any questions, we also have Stephanie here to answer any questions that you might have for very specific. But what we have in front of you is a, has to be read, the full um, resolution. It's not that bad, it's only one page, uh, section of a page. Yeah. Uh, but that basically the resolution, uh, if you so choose, to authorize the moving and continuing forward for that particular project. 
After you do that, if you were to so do that, uh, the next steps would be to have it so that uh, we would send it out to the newspaper. We have to have at least a five-day notice into the newspaper so that it is legal notice. We would have April 25th town meeting. At the town meeting, if so chosen, uh, we would then move that forward to a referendum, which would be May 9th, and that would be from noon to 8. And that's where we start the whole process. But we do need to continue with the idea that um, our our sewer plan needs to have upgrades to it, and this is one of those opportunities with clean water that we can have based on that time. So that's where we are right now, unless you have any very specific questions. Anyone from the board have any questions for the sewer person like me or Rebecca? Exactly. What is, what is it doing? Two clarifying um, uh, uh, replacement, well, basically replacement, but two clarifying units that will be done there. Those are the centrifuges that continue to separate the solids from the weight from the waters. So those are two brand new ones that have bigger capacity. And then the other thing is the generator that's in that building. Uh, I don't think I've ever been in building Ted, but there's a huge generator that it's in there. So that needs to be replaced as well. Oh, what was that? 1970s generator. This is the time. Yeah. Uh, the good thing I can, I can add more piece to that that I didn't mention before. Um, in three years, our, one of our bonds will actually drop off. So this will help to basically just Go into place. We talked about the rate, the increase in the rates for those, those particular users. Um, we anticipate the first year it will be a $10 increase, and the second year, uh, the grand total will be $35 total for the increase, which is very reasonable because if you take a look around at our area here, that's probably about half of what you normally would pay. So we've been very, very um, conscious about the those numbers for many years, but then again, we haven't done all those upgrades as we go along, so it's time. So it's an easy answer. Upgrade and maintenance of the system. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to read the resolution and then uh, I will entertain a motion and we will accept this resolution and move it on to the next stage. Be it resolved to appropriate $4 million for costs related to improvement at the WPCA North Treatment Plant comprised of the design, construction, and installation of a replacement generator and the design and construction of two secondary clarifier tanks. All as further described in analysis prepared by Fuss and O'Neill. The appropriation may be spent for design, construction, and installation costs, equipment, furnishings, materials, site improvements, survey costs, utilities, engineering fees, architect's fees, consultant's fees, administrative costs, construction management costs, <coughs> legal fees, net interest on borrowings, and other financial costs, and other expenses related to the project or, or its financing, and that the town issue bonds or notes and temporary notes in an amount not to exceed $4 million to finance the appropriation. The amount of bonds or notes authorized to be reduced by the amount of grants received for the projects and not separately appropriated to pay project appropriation. So do I have a motion to accept this resolution? I'll, I'll make that motion. All right. All right. Motion has been made by Ted and seconded it by John. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? All right. That motion passes. Thank you. Take a second just to sign that and we can take care of the rest of it. Thank you very much. If I may, I have just one more thing. You seem to have answered my question. Can I ask your role in this? So I am the supervisor of the WPCA department as a whole, and I'm the chief operator of that plant as well. You do have a name, right? Stephanie. All right, the next portion of our agenda is a presentation by the budgets uh, by department heads. Um, we have, should have an agenda in front of you. Uh, I tried to lay this out in order of smallest budget to the largest. If you're uh, speaking, what I would like you to do is to utilize, utilize the microphone, uh, briefly present your budget, uh, indicate any questions that the board may ask, um, also, if you are the department head, I'd like to introduce yourself 
If you are not the department head, I'd like you to introduce yourself and let us know who the department head is. So, um, with that being said, the other thing I would like to just say at the outset is uh, I have personally prepared at least a couple questions for every department. Um, I've done this so that I personally might have a better understanding of what your functions are and where your expenses are and the services that you provide for the town. But I also think it's very important that we have some of this information on record so that the town people can have a better understanding of what your role is in your service to them. So please, I know some of you are just so excited about speaking in front of a group, in front of a microphone. All right, please relax. Um, we're not, this is not the Spanish Inquisition or anything like that. This is, I, I hope this to be more relaxed and friendly. We will have some questions that might be a little um, hard to answer, but I'm sure that you would get support from either the first selectman or the finance director if there's something that you're not sure. And if you can't provide an answer tonight, that's okay. Um, you can always reach out. Reconnect with us and let us know what the answer to our question may be. So, again, tonight we're not making any decisions. We want to hear what you have to say, and we want to be able to move forward as we prepare what we feel is going to be the best uh, manageable budget for the residents of the town. So, with that being said, uh, the first uh, individual on the uh, agenda is our grant writer and economic development support. So. If that handsome young man would please come forward. Well, actually, uh, if you don't mind. No, nope, not at all. I'm Mary Nishimati. I'm the department head for the Economic Development Department. Um, the budget is pretty flat. Uh, the grant writer's salary was increased on um, the printout for the 4 5 budget numbers. Uh, it's shown as a 3% increase. That position is now a union position in the Town Law Employees Union. So it's a 2.5% increase as opposed to a 3. Um, the marketing line item remains the same. Training and conferences remain the same. Printing is down, uh, reduced to $80. And supplies and expenses have remained the same. So the goal was basically a, a zero increase budget other than the salaries. All right, so Jordan, if you would like to add anything at this time, I'd appreciate it. And I do have a couple questions. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Jordan Lumpkins. I'm the grant writer and economic development support. Um, I've been with the town now for about two and a half years. Um, currently, we have we've obtained about $1.6 million in grants. I anticipate the next two weeks we should receive notice that we've received um, closer to uh, $2.3 million. Um, I work very closely with Mark in particular. Um, we've done a lot of parks and recreation type projects and uh, trying to dabble more with the economic development. Um, I'm going to pass the marketing budget as it can do much. Um, I tend to take on a lot of different projects um, and use that marketing uh, funding as a match for those types of projects. So, do you have any questions? That you have to answer? Um, Yes, you mentioned that you have not used much um, you know, of your seven thousand dollar budget this year. All right, um, I have, based on the report that I received in March, uh, you don't use about two thousand dollars. Now, granted, another month has elapsed, so I wonder if you could speak to that. Um, we budgeted seven thousand last year. We used a little over two, so I wonder if you could kind of speak to the. Just you know, disparity there. Do we anticipate some additional costs for the end of this fiscal year? So through the end of this fiscal year, um, we currently, uh, or we recently received a marketing grant from the Eastern Regional Tourism District, and I'm working uh, with them, the PBA, um, I'm the town's representative on the Tourism District, um, and uh, we're putting together a brochure that's going to be mailed to the 6,700 households in town. Um, and will be distributed throughout the region at different events, such as the Big E. Um, the Last Green Valley is going to help distribute it. Um, in addition to that brochure, there's also going to be a mailer that's going to include all the different events that's going to happen throughout the remainder of the year. Um, so in total, so that 
was a $3,400 grant. The PBA generously donated $2,000, and from the marketing budget, it's going to be another um, about $1,400. And then uh, still looking for more projects. We'd like to look into some signage throughout town and things like that. <coughs> Just trying to actually advertise what's going on because there's a lot of good stuff happening. All right. All right. I did also notice that you know, uh, budget for your supplies is $1,200, and as of March 9th, we, uh, we used about $137. Um, obviously, that's a pretty good savings. Do you anticipate utilizing more when you have balance left by the end of the year? Or? Oh, yeah, I could always use more supplies. Well, yeah. uh, I guess let me rephrase that question. You, you have over $1,000 balance in your expense, supplies and expenses. Do you anticipate chewing up that $1,000 by the end of the year? Probably not the full $1,000. Okay. I can chew up a good bit, though. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone else on the board have a question for Jordan? Uh, no. I have a question for Marianne. Okay. I, I didn't understand that you said your budget was a 2% increase or what it was. No, it, it's shown on the printout as a 3% increase. The grant writer position is now a union position, and that increase per the union is 2.5% as opposed to 3. So it'll be a 2.5% salary increase as of July 1 as opposed to 3. But you have budget. In the economic development it, for the grant writer. It's a 2.5% increase for that budget. For that salary line item, yeah. No, for the budget. Your entire expenses have increased by how much? For your department. It shows here as 2%, but. Okay. I wanted to add something else into that, if you don't mind. Um, they're doing a very good job of trying to keep the numbers very minimal for the increases. Um, and you asked about the marketing. Yeah. Um, so there's one more piece of the marketing that we're working on right now. And for this fiscal year, so, mm -hmm. so I understand what we're trying to continue to accomplish. If you look at the town website, we were looking at um, different ways to market the different businesses that are empty, buildings that are empty. Um, so we used the same company that we have our, our town website on, and we asked them, what can we do to upgrade it? So that if you were to go on to it, and it should be done hopefully next week, and then it cost us $2,000 to do that. Um, that's a one-time fee, um, but you will see that in the in the area on the town website for uh, business, it will show you all the different types of retail or commercial, and it will have a link to that business and, and what we call a map. It. You can actually click on the map, so if there's somebody from out of town that says, I'm looking for something that I can use for 20,000 square feet and it has to have certain things and amenities on it, they can actually look on that site, see the, see the buildings, click on map it, it will pull right up on our town. Uh, um, map itself, and then it'll show you where it is located. And if there's an associated link for a realtor, it would also be on there as well. So we're trying to make it so that we can be uh, marketing what we have for businesses, and that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, in the future, I'd like to be able to use that website even further, because if you were to look at as a resident coming in new, and you don't know where things are, there's a way to actually use that map, map it function to map out all of your local businesses, so like if it's a restaurant, or if it's, um, whether it be a church, a restaurant, um, th things that, that you would use and, and, and utilize on a regular basis, you could actually use that map function. Is that tied in with what the project, ongoing project in the clerk's office too? Or is that something that's different? Yeah. That's different? Okay, so it is going to be utilized as a matter of different things we'll be using for. Uh, at this time, I'd like to welcome the fire marshal to this. How are you doing? Dino, fire marshal, emergency management director from town. Uh, overall, for my budget this year, I think everyone it's a 1% increase. Uh, my uh, salary, obviously, is contractual. I, my stipend for my deputies is the same. We've um, done pretty good in that line item. Vehicle expenses are the same. I was actually able to decrease my emergency operations center budget. And I added a new line item for training, which we haven't had in the past, which is something that I believe we should have. And the supplies and expenses has uh, stayed the same. Um, is that the training? I'm not seeing that. 
differentiated here. Maybe it's just because this was set up earlier and separated. Yeah. Correct. And I think the, the question that was asked earlier about what are the increases, yeah. we set our budget up early. Right. And that includes not only the budget that uh, um, Kelly's produced for you, that three pager, mm -hmm. or it's actually seven pages, but it's also my individual ones. They were set up early. Yeah. So this, the training is inclusive in this budget. It's just a different line. Yep. Different budget. Okay. Now you have, um, again, this is based on March. You have like a twenty-five hundred dollar balance on your vehicle expense. What do you attribute that to? Uh, I, if, if what I think is going to happen will happen, it's probably going to be eaten up. I believe I'm going to have to do some transmission work to that vehicle. Okay. But today you've been able to hold it in line. It's kind of a contingency at this point. Uh, if I don't break really hard, then we're good. Okay. <laughs> Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Thank you for your service. Thank you. Okay. Uh, registrar's office. Um, I don't see anybody no. from here. From there. Animal. Oh, yeah. Registrar. I'm sorry. There was nobody here for that. To answer, but I'd like to just have a refresher. Uh, when I took the uh, proposed budget and added up the dollars uh, for this upcoming year, uh, what was printed was seventy five nine seven excuse me, seventy five thousand seven ninety seven, but in reality it's ninety one thousand seven ninety seven. So um, I have corrected that on correct okay. Uh, the other question I have is uh, we have quite a, a jump in the sixteen thousand dollar increase uh, for election workers. And we have the state of Connecticut's uh, minimum wage rates increases. And calculating out roughly how many different uh, referendums or uh, election processes we have to go through, that's why the number's higher. Uh, also on expenses, um, we budgeted uh, 18.5. Last year, 19.5 this year, but we still have $2,700 remaining as of March. What do we, how do we anticipate that? I can't answer what they're looking to do, but I can tell you if you went down and take a look at the registrar's uh, office, mm -hmm. uh, the clutter, they're starting to clean up the clutter as we speak. They put a new cabinet in there, and there's a lot of uh, reorganization, so I think that they'll be ordering some more supplies. Now. Anybody that's been in the registrar's office, in the past, you're barely able to walk in, and you have two desks facing each other, and then there's a clutter of papers and, and fol folders everywhere, file cabinets. So they did clean that up a little bit. Kevin, on the um, election workers, you just explained <coughs> the state of Connecticut, but um, we closed a couple of polls. Wouldn't that reflect somewhere? Uh, yes. Um, we're, again, it's a number of times you're going to be actually looking to go out to a referendum or a vote. That's why we kept it a little higher. If, but yes, we are supposed to be saving money as we go. Hopefully, we can do that. Uh, do you anticipate opening additional polls for major elections? No. Matter of fact, if you notice uh, what you voted on tonight, mm -hmm. uh, the next step of that is the legal notice. And the legal notice originally had written on it all four polling places. We don't do that anymore because the registrars had changed that last year. Mm -hmm. So we're down to just the two polling places. Okay. We have enough in there in case uh, what do you want some more changes that may be coming up in the state? That's a hit or miss with the life changes, life and law changes. The, they're looking at um, the early voting, so 10 days prior, which would be 10 full days of voting. Polls would be open for 10 days, which would be a huge increase. Um, Secretary of State is really pushing that unless the state can fund that, not to vote through with it right now. Um, but it does appear that that will roll out for this election, but it's still, you know, up in the air at this point. But that is what they're they're looking at is 10 days, which means we would need poll workers for 10 days. Um, clerk's office would need to be open every night to lock up ballots, or they would have to purchase a separate um, container or something to lock the ballots to keep them safe. So there could be a lot of expenses to it. So the secretary is definitely fighting to either have the state fund it or don't roll it out yet. But we don't know yet. 
on an annual basis when you get information from the state of Connecticut on what your, your budget is, whether it's ECS funding, whatever it might be, we're taking that from usually from CCM and we're hoping and praying that that's going to hold. Similar here, except we don't know what they're going to vote. Legislatures could vote one way or another. I think that this number here we have um, errors on the side of caution and we're, we should be okay. Any other questions? Um, my budget here, the first 2% um, increase is just a contractual increase. The second one is part-time workers. We have hired an assistant animal control officer this year. She is 20 hours a week, and she's a licensed animal control officer, which helps immensely. Um, the only other item that's on here, which actually should have been on here previous years, is the $400. That is a line item. That must have been mixed in. Yeah, it was mixed in previously. That's um, by state law. We have to have that money put aside in the event that there is damage to livestock and we can't find the owners. The state reimburses the town anything over hundred dollars. But that's a, a state thing that we have to have in there. So that my budget is the same. How many part-time workers do you have now? I have a, I have two. I have an assistant animal control officer, and I have what I call a kennel worker. He's been with us for five years. He works 15 hours a week, and he's still getting the minimum wage because it keeps going up. Any other questions? Thank you for your service. Thank you. this year than last year. You see the supply was expensive with computers, but that was kind of a wash. And then the only thing that went up is my conference for $200 and legal $20. What are they requiring from you on a new basis as far as uh, conferences occurring? I have to, well, recently, within the last year, we have to have to be certified. We have to get 10 hours a year, 50 hours in five years. So I have to go to these conferences. It all depends on hours, whatever ones I choose. Okay. Now, um, as my understanding, you have an ongoing project as well? Or do I have any Project? Uh, the tax sale? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. That would be happening in May 16th. But right now we're down to only nine accounts. People are paying up, but I did do a um, for this current year what we're working on, so you can know we're at 98% of the current budget that I copy. Okay. Not nothing critical, just one better understanding. Yep. 
Any other questions? Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. All right. Board of Select. Uh, we only had one slow month, which was the month of December. We had 37. 
and uh, we collected $161,983 just in permit fees this year. And there was no major construction going on. So just think about that. That's mostly residential and really like commercial work. So that's uh, quite a bit of work that was being uh, done in this town. And by saying that, by 606 permits, it's uh, probably way over 100 more than we did the previous year. So uh, our office is uh, much busier than it was. So by us trying to get these new uh, uh, tablets and stuff, is, and we're hoping that uh, there's no way of knowing for sure because the final expenses, uh, we won't know until, you no. Know, things hit us in groves, uh, like, uh, just like, uh, uh, we, we have to put somebody up because the house got condemned or whatever. We had none of them so far this year. And last year, we used up all the fees last year. You know, so it's, you know, from one year to the next, there's no way of knowing. And we can't say we're going to be even you know, close to that and not use it. We have no way of knowing that, 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 uh, that amount. Uh, so that's one of the expenses that uh, comes up uh, quite often. Uh, like I said last year, we used up everything. I remember the year before, I think we used up 1500 so it's like we never know. Uh, actually, we increased it last year because we used up too much the previous year. Um, then what else did I have to say? Oh yeah, the last thing was, uh, uh, if you look at my line item, it says uh, uh, building inspector, department head, and it says assistant inspector, and computer salaries. And it shows that he's making a lot of, his, his salaries is a lot of my budget. And he actually filled in for me 12 times last year, 12 days. So for having that whole salary look at my budget, it doesn't really look that good. Because he actually worked for me 12 days last year. The only time he does anything for me is when I'm on vacation or I'll sit where I And Go so ahead. I, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, the computers that you're investing in, uh, will that be like a one-time person? Yes, it will. with uh, possibly a maintenance fee thereafter? It probably will. The maintenance fee is going to be a, on a yearly thing because we have to pay for the, uh, uh, the program itself. Right has a maintenance fee per year. Okay. And what will that be next year? I wish I wrote that down, but I know it's, I think it's, uh, if I remember right, it was, uh, we're talking about buying two tablets, uh, one for me and one for the assistant, because uh, we, we want to be able to have these with us all the time. So, uh, so I would, I think it was $889 for the, the year, so I'd say around 900 bucks. Right. It was a summary that Any other questions? With the, uh, I have a question. Yes. So with the online services, um, do we still accept uh, uh, in-person, like hard copy as we had for many years, or no. do they get turned away? They get turned, actually, I should say they get turned away. We have kiosks in our office. Okay. And the kiosk is, is uh, either, sometimes I'm there and sometimes, well, most of the time my secretary's there, either either or will help the, the person on the kiosk. Okay. Mostly the secretary, because she's much better than me. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so the other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, Rick, is, um, his time in service with the town playing field will be up as of June 30th? No, July 13th. July 13th, okay. So um, you see that the number in there for the department head full time is still there because we're looking at other towns and what they pay for them, and it's way over that. Uh, but here's the good thing. Um, we do have an anticipation that uh, Rick has said graciously that he would stay on a contractual basis and work for us until we find somebody else, so that will help us out tremendously. Um, and if there's a particular business that comes into town, he was going to take care of that right off the bat. But that's what I wanted you to know that we have that line in there, if that's the anticipation for this next year. How many years? That will be here? Mm -hmm. uh, a little over four. Four and a half, basically. And to be honest with you, they're, they're good years. <laughs> and. Uh, I think I have a couple of reasons why I'm leaving. One of them is that it's the time off, okay? When you first get hired, the most you get off is two, two weeks, okay? Even though we have holidays and stuff like that. But two weeks, for somebody that's 67 years old, we want to live our life a little bit more. If I had five weeks, like people that have been here for 25 years, maybe a different story, but I don't have five weeks. So it's the, me and my wife want to be able to go place and do things, and two weeks is not quite enough. That's the, that's the main reason. And the, and the, the, the uh, Kevin was saying about pay, uh, pay scale. Uh, there's not one town in this area that's under $100,000 anymore. And I mean, they, they almost everybody starts at 105 for a building official. And 
We just had a class that just will be done in July, and there's only 26 people in the class. When I was in my class uh, four years ago, it was 56. So, and, and if you guys were with me the first day I went to my online seminar, I mean my in-person seminar, I was like, I'm looking around the class and I'm saying, I'm 63 and I'm the youngest person here. And everybody's leaving right now. And so since everybody's leaving, that's why the pay scale went up. Because to get anybody to fill the position, the scale is up there. So. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank The salaries line item for the zoning enforcement officer and the uh, planning and zoning clerk is listed at 2%. Their contract says 2.5%. So that's a difference. Um, that will need to be increased uh, just by a few dollars. Um, travel expense remain the same. Training conferences, uh, GIS hosting, the white copy or the map uh, plotter and supplies and expense, they're all uh, zero increase. Uh, on travel, so mm -hmm. again, as a March has spent in uh, the CGI uh, I wonder if you could just speak to that. Well, actually, um, the town vehicle, okay. the zoning enforcement officer, I don't like to use his vehicle because in case he needs to go out on an inspection. So if I'm going somewhere, I'm out of town. So I use my vehicle. I haven't had to do that uh, recently. I have, as of late, been traveling to Hartford and whatnot uh, and Middletown, but that hasn't. Are you logging any type of uh, reimbursement for that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, GIS hosting, and what exactly is that? Uh, that is broken up between departments, and it's for our online mapping system. You <coughs> mentioned a project that's kind of been mentioned a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, on your budget this year, you haven't spent any of that money. Is that because it's being that's spent a one, by other That's a once-a-year bill. Okay. When does that usually do? Oh, uh, well, I want to say May. Okay.
So for next year, you don't see any, um, any type of major projects. I know in the past year you've been getting a lot of things like address, like desk in the process of getting a desk thing. Yes. And then there was also was it shelving. In the yeah, mobile? so I have the mobile unit shelving. Um, yeah. It's shipping from the company to the place that we got it from. On um, April 27th, that'll be coming in and being installed in uh, May. And then I just had someone, the same company actually come back today and do another quote on a, um, for the middle bowl, if you're familiar with the bowl, the middle bowl, the line of um, cabinets that are on the right hand side, um, I look, I'm looking at getting them about the same size but doubling the capacity of what I would fit in there for um, space of our vital records. So that's our birth, death, marriage, and military records. Um, we're at a room. And then my boards and commissions, actually the Board of Finance, I have, um, I have no room at all. So I have your last set of meetings like jammed on top of your old set because I can't fit them anywhere. Um, if you go into more meetings with more books, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> so these new units, I'm hoping um, they'll come in at a reasonable price. I got to crunch numbers with Kelly, but I have that other dollar account. So there's two dollar accounts that we have. Um, so it's not coming out of our money, um, no general fund money. Um, there's another, the, the dollar fund that's for very specific projects. And this falls under that one. So I can get all of those covered, depending on you know, how many units I can get covered. i got to go over you, because I know some of those big bills come out of that account. Um, but I think we're going to have a decent amount left over in that account to cover all of that, so it won't come out of any of our general. So that will be covered in this year, <clears throat> not, not anything. The, that, those, those dollars roll. So that never closes with the fiscal year. So that just keeps building. Mm -hmm. um, that has nothing to do with um, the town budget or the, the fiscal year that just rolls. So. Any other questions? In, in the veterans area, do you make a distinction between release and discharge? Um, I don't determine that, um, but I can only accept an honorable discharge. And there's two DD-214s that the military will issue you when you, re when you retire or you um, are released. There is one that uh, um, that needs to come to me, and that does cause some confusion with some of our veterans. I can't accept the short form. I have to see if you were honorably or dishonorably discharged. Um, so if that's the only the only thing I'm looking for is making sure I'm getting so the long form. So DD-214 is the discharge? It is. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. That wasn't so bad. Not so bad. Like <laughs> <laughs> this. office. She's not here, so I guess you got it. Let's go to obviously is not here tonight, so we'll see if we can try and answer as many questions as we have. Uh, 
Kelly Vachon, finance director. Um, the increases in the finance budget. Um, the first two department has salaries and salaries. Two um, of the girls in my department are union contracts, so those are on a contract, and myself has a contract. Um, so those increases. Now the audit, there's a small increase, well, 10,000 for the audit this year. So every two years we get an audit of our pension. It's an actuarial report that we get from Pucar and Holcomb's, the firm that we use. So this is the year that that comes up. That's a costly process. It's usually, I would say, around 8,000. So uh, that increase. But that's every, by every two years, yeah. We always do other audits in there too that is posted. I do an audit of OPEB, other post employment benefits, and then another audit on the pension fund every year. But the actuarial report is every two years, and that's more money than the other audits. Um, ADP is our provider for payroll. We need a small increase in that. Um, the rates are going up per file, and as I hire more employees, there's more files I have to pay for. So that's one of the reasons why that is going to be going up. Um, conferences is maintaining the same. Computer is the same. And supplies, a small increase. Um, a lot of our, my supplies are going up. So I have to order checks, um, the stock for the print checks. They're getting printed through my accounting system. But um, that's expensive. This year I had to buy more checks stock for our general fund. It was $2,300. So as I have to replace, I run checks from like general fund, the sewer fund, the dog fund, um, ARPA fund, and 2% reserve fund for the school. So all those checks are separate accounts. Are you, separate. Are you going to have enough uh, remaining this yeah, year? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Because you're it's like showing five, a really small balance. Yeah, it's $500 right now. Yeah, I'll so, be fine. so you spend more money since the last report? Yes. Paper? Yes. Okay. Paper, paper is a killer. Right now we buy paper in bulk and then I allocate it out. I have people sign it out and as people use it. And then I post it to their parties. Is that new? No. I don't book, I don't I know we want to combine it with the school. We don't combine it with the school. I just do it in bulk for the town and yeah. I disperse. Well trying to combine it with the school might not be logistically possible. I know. Right. Any other questions? Thank you. Building and ground. Hello, Tom Roberts, uh, maintenance lead. Um, our biggest uh, increase is in salaries. Uh, we're looking to add another employee, full time employee, to our department um, so we can better keep up with all the work we have. We can't keep up with our mowing, our rewagging, brush cutting, just basic work here because we're always off to something else. You start painting, next thing you know you're mowing, and then you get back to the project. We're not finishing things. Um, we get a lot of calls from the public that things aren't completed. Um, parks, hillsides aren't being mowed. Uh, we just don't, cemeteries especially, we just don't have time to do it. Um, so that, that's our biggest increase. Um, water increase. Not really sure why that is. Maybe Kelly could answer that. Well, this year, currently, You're cutting it close this yeah, year. Current year budget, we're cutting it close. I think we have to empty and the pool. We're going to be empty it again. Yeah, okay. So that was an additional. So I'm anticipating that <coughs> next year. I'm and, and to every year. Right? Uh, uh, like every other. Yeah. 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 We usually do every other. Yeah. You have to exchange the water. You can't just keep putting chemicals and chemicals and chemicals. Eventually, you have to freshen it up. Um, this year we'll be, we'll be draining the entire pool. Um, we have the acid wash pile because it gets you can see it gets yellow. If you look at the pool, you can actually see the yellow. Um, we acid wash it and it cleans it back up and it looks good. We do that. I think it was five years ago was the last time we did that. So that's a complete empty. Um, our other things, cleaning supplies and supplies and expense are both going up. Um, that's just the cost of materials, cost of toilet paper, soap. Uh, building supplies, screws, paint, everything is just going up so much. So this, this year, you can see we're going to be cutting it really close. Um, there's no way we could keep it the same for next year. Uh, we are getting, we're not going to have a part time groundskeeper anymore, so there's a savings there. 
Now, you said there is supplies and expense. Uh, did you have a big expenditure in the last month or something? Because I, I was showing you still at 46% of your budget left on expenses in March. Supplies and expense. As of uh, recently. Yeah, okay. It's, it takes just good, something brave. So it could look good for a long time, and then all of a sudden something expensive. You know, a door closer, a couple hundred bucks. It just goes fairly quickly. How many employees do you have full time? We have three full time. Um, the last couple of years we had a part time employee. He did not come back this year. Um, and assuming that we were going to get another employee, we didn't go out and hire another part time employee. So you're only going to have three full time, or are you going to move? We will have four full time. Four. Mm -hmm. How many Zero. Uh, At one time, this department was five full-time people, and just I'm assuming the budget was it was cut down to three. Three. It's just not enough. If I was hearing you correctly, you introduced yourself as a lead. Yes. You're not I, a supervisor. I'm not a supervisor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Ted, just, just so everybody knows, um, things come up on a regular basis, and you know that. Um, we just had a, a, an event here at the town hall recently, and people tried to walk out on the fire escapes when they were told not to. So now we're going to be installing that uh, breaker bar that has the alarm on it. And we also found out that there's an issue with, I think it's this fire escape that we have to do some welding on. So those things occur, and that's why during the year you find those changes that have to be done right away. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Recreation. Simmons, Recreation Director. Uh, so, uh, starting at the top for Department Head, uh, I am Department Head. I've uh, been here for about two years, uh, and uh, I think we've seen a lot of growth. There's growth over those two years uh, at the pool, at the Senior Center, and the Rec Center in terms of recreation programming. Uh, so, I hope to keep that growth going. Um, so, starting at the top, uh, I just have the standard 3% increase. Uh, I'm not part of the union or I'm not on any particular contract, so uh, that's just a standard 3%. Uh, pool coordinator and recreation assistant. Um, both of those individuals, uh, so the pool coordinator, uh, she's been with us for about 15 years uh, and she's been passed up several times for uh, increases. Um, as well as the recreation assistant, she's actually been with us for 40 years. Um, and again, she's been uh, subjected to several uh, fiscal years without any increase, or with a 0% increase. So um, I think it's uh, you know, only right to give them a 6% increase uh, this year. Um, Part-time salaries, uh, this is um, summer rec. So our, our summer camp, uh, the last two years, we received a grant from the state um, that covered the majority of expenses for uh, summer camp. This year, the state announced, um, I think it was March 15th, uh, that the grant is back again. Um, so prior to you know knowing about the, the grant being available, you know I had to put an additional 30000 into the budget um, to bridge that, that gap. Um, so if we get the, the grant again, uh, we should be able to reduce that number. Um, but again, we won't know uh, whether or not we get that grant until uh, you know, uh, early to mid May. So, uh, so that's a, the $30,000 uh, increase. Uh, for Recreation Program Coordinator, um, that is a $9,807 increase. Um, that being, she's currently part-time, uh, and 
part of her salary was paid for, again, using a grant, um, that grant ends September, uh, September 1st. Um, so she's not necessarily getting a huge increase, she's just getting the standard 3%, uh, but because the town um, wants to keep her on for the same amount of hours, uh, there's, there's the, the additional expense, I guess, in terms of um, now that we don't have that grant. Uh, recreation custodian, uh, similar scenario. He's actually um, just getting his hours increased but on top of the 3%. So typically he uh, is. He's been working 40 hours, but we budgeted the last two years uh, for 37.5. So this is just increasing his hours from 37.5 to 40. So uh, that's what that increases. Uh, senior vehicle expenses, that's a $450 increase. Uh, that's just increasing fuel and uh, maintenance. Uh, we use the vehicles daily. We have a regular four-door sedan, as well as the um, transportation van. Um, again, both of those are for, we, we use one of those two vehicles every day, uh, five days a week, um, for our senior transportation service, which has been uh, very popular and, I would say, probably growing in need. So, uh, swimming pool and lifeguard staff, uh, so that is, Actually, a ten thousand two hundred five dollar um, deduction. <coughs> that is because you, you may have noticed that uh, the aquatics revenue uh, line item uh, is also dropping. So the, the plan with that is uh, <coughs> going uh, over the next couple of years. Uh, we'll zero out the um, the aquatics or the pool revenue, and we'll also lower the swimming pool um, <coughs> the line, uh, because we will move to a more self-sustaining model. Um, so instead of asking the town for 75000 and then giving the town back $75,000, we are just going to ask for zero and hopefully operate with a um, you know, sustainable uh, revenue model. So, uh, Pool contracts, that's a $720 increase. Again, um, that's just the increase of everyday chemical supplies and uh, pool equipment. Um, park and field maintenance, uh, so that's an increase of $15,000. Uh, you'll see that uh, in the current budget, there's not a single dollar allocated for park maintenance. There is building and grounds, however, as we just found out, that budget is being used up uh, just about every penny, uh, and our parks uh, aren't necessarily where they should be in terms of upkeep and uh, you know maintenance. So this is it's kind of going to be like a joint uh, effort with building the ground and this fifteen thousand dollars to continue to invest in our parks, um, not just in terms of maintenance, but also uh, you know Kevin and I have talked a lot about. Installing some benches and cathedrals at the Musa, um, you know, green, green space. So, this is something that we could potentially contribute to that, as well as, you know, the Little League fields, um, helping them with uh, keeping up their fields. Uh, it, it could be replacing playground parts that break. Those are very expensive. <laughs> uh, uh, one swing could be a thousand dollars. Uh, so, um, right now we don't have that in our budget, and it's, it's absolutely necessary. Trash cans, you know, um, those can be a couple hundred dollars. Uh, so, just like Ron was saying, those little, uh, you know, maintenance items that come up throughout the year, they add up a lot. So, um, this is to help with that. Uh, utilities, $5,000 increase. Um, Kelly and I were just talking, and we had to because potentially lower that, um, I think, maybe you could explain that better, if we did have to lower that. Well, I see a savings in the solar panels at the town hall, so his pool department obviously is in the town hall, so that would be a savings for his budget, because right. I allocate a portion of the pool operation to his budget. 
So. Yep. And it, I mean, it is worth noting that this year uh, it looks like we will deplete that utility line item before the end of the fiscal year. So uh, we anticipate, you know, having to increase that uh, unless unless we can offset it with the uh, town hall. Uh, uh, recreation contracts. So that's six hundred fifty-three dollars. Um, that's your again your standard. Uh, annual contracts that we have. So we have uh, pest control contracts, we have um, our copy machine contracts, we have, um, yeah, uh, that detail. So for recreation contracts, we have pest control services, our uh, recreation software, um, our background checks. Constant Contact is the software that we use for email blasts. Um, P3 Tech, that's our firewall security. Uh, movie license contracts and AE contracts. So that's what that recreation contracts is. Um, senior expenses, uh, this is a $3,000 increase. That is um, uh, strictly salary increases. So right now we have three uh, part-time senior personnel. That we have a social worker program coordinator and our transportation driver. Um, so uh, that $3,000 increase is simply just salary increases 3% for each of those uh, individuals. Uh, supplies and expenses, so that is an increase of $11,250. Um, again, just like we've heard from the rest of the departments, uh, this general um, supplies has gone up. Um, yeah, uh, so that, that could be um, our summer camp supplies, that could be program arts and crafts, uh, that could be, you know, um, if we ran out of money, we could put a little bit into the parks. So it is, that's kind of a, like a, our, our general supplies line. Um, so again, that's just been, and I do want to point this out, um, in terms of the growth of the department, uh, so we have in fiscal year um, 2021 to 2022, we had 2,794 registrations. This fiscal year alone, which we still have two and a half months, we've already had 3,143 registrations. Uh, and then as far as activities offered, again 2021 to 2022, we offered 390 sorry, 339 programs. We've already uh, offered 377 programs, and I anticipate that we'll exceed 400 programs by the end of the fiscal year. Um, so uh, the more programs we have, the more supplies and expenses we have as well. Uh, so uh, at the bottom, I am asking for $76,683. Uh, increase to our recreation budget. So, I'll take any questions. Um, yeah, I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, the, uh, you said the pool coordinator, the second and third lines, that they have skipped increases. Yes, I, I can't okay. necessarily okay. pass over. Right. I, I mean, again, I've only been here for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, Casey Eric Fire Coordinator has been here for uh, 15 years, uh, cumulative uh, through her lifeguard years. And Aquatics coordinator, so I can't necessarily speak to what year she was skipped over. I just she passed over last year. Uh, last year she got three percent. Okay. So um, you're anticipating a thirty-seven thousand dollar decrease in pool revenue. What do you attribute that to? It, it's a, that's not a reflection of the pool's performance. That's that's a reflection of the, the model that we're moving to. So beginning. This current fiscal year, we're going to build up our pool revenue uh, account so that that way, a whole fiscal year from now, we can move to hopefully a 100% uh, self sustaining model where you know, that pool that pool budget that we swim pool behind uh, lifeguards mm -hmm. uh, that might be $0. So um, it would be sustained, the, the expenses for those 
lifeguard per se would be sustained by the pool rather than the And it would be accepted. So essentially, right now we're running at a little deficit as far as what the revenues are compared to what we're paying for us, our, our employees. But you're anticipating the revenues to increase to a point that those revenues have offset the salary. Correct. Correct. And, and we need to build up that account first. Okay. Because we can't go into the fiscal year with zero dollars in that account. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we won't be able to pay the staff. Okay. So why are we moving to that? What's the reason for it? Uh, it I, I think it's uh, probably a healthier model. Um, and truthfully, it, it provides more opportunities. So. For example, if we have unexpected pool maintenance come up, uh, instead of being locked into a line item, I can say, okay, we we had you know five thousand dollars to spend because we had a good year last year. Um, so I, I think it's just more flexibility in terms of uh, the maintenance and purchasing um, you know additional pool supplies, things in the locker rooms, uh, improvements in the back pump room, uh, instead of Putting that burden on the taxpayers, uh, you know. Hopefully, if we have money left over, we can carry it over a fiscal year to fiscal year um, and, uh, and build it up, and then um, use that leftover money for you know, various operations. So, do you see the income coming? Do you do you see that being more than what it, the operating cost is? And if so, like where is that going to be written? So, like like who's going to know what's in the balance? Of this sure. Or so it's being spent yeah. on. Will, will that be here or no. will no. that be on It wouldn't the be here because this represents the bill rate of the taxpayers, you know, dollars. Um, it would be a receivable account. So if you'd bring money in and then you'd have salaries associated with it. So it's a receivable account, so it would trickle every year. So the auditors would come in and obviously look at that. Mm -hmm. So at, at some point, because once the revenue is built to a certain place, the line items here are going to be reduced. Exactly. So, so it should be a self-sustaining account. It, it might take, you know, one or two fiscal years, mm -hmm. but you should see that line item decreasing as well as the revenue. When you talk about the park and field maintenance, um, and then right below it is the park and maintenance, um, you're talking mostly about repairs. You're not talking about employment of personnel to maintain these. That? That's that's something that we can certainly consider. Um, you know, five thousand dollars doesn't get you very far. Um, you know, or sorry, not five thousand. Fifteen thousand dollars doesn't get you very far. Um, you know, uh, yeah, are we on the same page? Um, we're getting there, I think. Okay, all right. And then you were giving me a look. So, so I just I just want to have a I want to have a good understanding because keep in mind that. The questions I'm going to ask are probably questions the public wants to know, too. Sure, sure. So ideally, yes, I would love to hire a part-time staff who can um, focus on uh, particularly the ball fields mm -hmm. um, for both playing the Little League and Little League. That's obviously a partnership that we would have to explore that if they want someone, you know, to make it in their field. Um, but again, uh, you would have to pay someone at least $20 an hour, assuming that they're you know, 10 hours a week minimum, uh, that's probably half of that 15000 right there. So that's not a lot of money left over for them to, uh, you know, actually do improvements. In the, uh, so it, I guess to answer your question, uh, right now that 15000 does not include uh, a, a part person. Okay. Uh, you've also got $7,800 in the copy, but it wasn't even included last year. Copy your expense. It wasn't a part. It wasn't a line item last year. Now it's added seventy eight hundred dollars for copy. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, 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 sir. That's a, no. That's grouped in with the supplies and expenses. Okay. So I think budget. you have a slightly different okay budget <coughs> for a sheet that you're looking at. Right. You talked about grants earlier. Yes. Do you do that on your own, or do you use uh, uh, a? That's. That's Jordan. Him and I, like you said, we work very closely. So oftentimes, I'll bring. Sure, that was happening. Sure. Oh yes. Yeah. I'll bring a grant to his attention, and then he's amazing with making it happen. So. Trust me, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so this got brought up at another, um, just another meeting. The custodian, where is he at specifically? Is he in the one building? Yes. And that's it. Yep. Forty hours a week. Yes. 
Yeah, uh, keep in mind that our building, uh, actually right now, our building is open from 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 uh, because uh, we have Head Start that's in the building. Uh, they arrive at 7.30 and then we have programs and classes that go until 8 o'clock and then he's there for the last half hour cleaning up. You were saying um, an example of the 15,000, like if there was like, let's say, repair work, you know, replacement work that needed to be done, one of the things that, that could be applied to is the little field. Yep. So um, the question I have is, is there any type of plan in place that kind of establishes, like, if something were to go and fall into disrepair, whose responsibility is it as far as funding those repairs? Because in the past, it's kind of been, there's been discussions about it at budget meeting, but it's kind of been, and not clearly shown as far as so what's the little league essentially responsible for replacing sure. you know repairing and what would the town be responsible for? Um, so I'm curious if that's sure. Let me look at me. I mean I can answer or I'll let Fabian answer. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, right now the town has a lease uh, for the Plainfield Little League property, um, but there is nothing in writing for the Moose property. So for this current year, uh, we're going to um, honor the Plainfield lease for the Moose lease as well. That does say that um, Little League is responsible for um, uh, any maintenance uh, for their particular ball field. Uh, I would say that includes the dugouts and their concession stand. Uh, Plainfield uh, Little League, Right now, the town doesn't really have any other property over there. That's essentially 100% Little League. Moose Up is a little different because we have the skate park there, we have basketball court, um, playground, uh, as well as um, now we've been utilizing one of the, the fields there. Um, so it, same, same idea. So if there's maintenance uh, on the fields, um, it, Little League is supposed to cover those costs. Um, but if it's something like the skate park, playground, et cetera, then the town is responsible. It's also helpful, I think, to the public, because I know I've had people, I've talked to people about the subject of, well, who's responsible for this? Because they just took a walk down to one of the fields and it looks like crap, you know, whatever they're referring to. So the question is, is do they contact the leadership of the league or do they contact the town to address the issue? And it's, it's, it depends on the issue. Right, on the if it's, what we do is we do the maintenance by way of mowing and trimming. Uh, in past years, we've also donated some initial um, play, if you would, for the for the fields, and that was our responsibility. Um, we're still going through that lease and re reading through everything as to who the other responsibilities are, but basically it's playing for Little League. Um, there was an inspection there last week. Was right? yes. uh, last week there was an inspection there, but there's things that they have to take care of. Um, and I think the idea of the $15,000 for the maintenance has a lot to do with that. Um, they, they actually have a healthy end of your budget. So they decided they can't obviously run their um, nonprofit like that. So they believe that they, I believe that they were purchasing two mowers. Because we'll, we'll go out to the maintenance on our mowing on a Monday or Tuesday based on the weather. But they're playing a game starting on Friday. So that means that they need to do other maintenance. We don't have the staffing to do that or the weather you know, time. So that's what we've been doing right now. We're trying to work with them. I still meet with their uh, leadership to go over what you know, changes we need to do, what things um, they need to start working on more of. So it's, we're trying to be cooperative with them, but these numbers would help out tremendously to continue the main steps. Yeah, and, and it's, it's worth noting that you know their revenue is dependent on their enrollment numbers. So I think last year they had as many as 300. This year they're hovering around 200. So you know year to year they can have um, some pretty big variations in their revenue. And you know, again, they're all volunteers. So uh, you know, we're right now, like Kevin said, we're, we're talking with your leadership, and we're trying to find that happy medium uh, to ensure that. Well, first, to get the fields and parks back up to a, an acceptable standard, and then to ensure that they stay at that level. Uh, you know, so yeah. yeah thank you. you didn't mention youth football, and is there a problem with that? Taking care of the baseball and no football? They, uh, football seems to be doing okay. Technically, they own their property. So. That they own, yeah. yes. But uh, don't they want you to do some what, maintenance? No? Oh, sure they would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> I was involved years ago. Okay. I, but I thought by now, seriously, I did think by now they could have worked something out. Uh, yeah. And how many years that's the In the emergency now? situation, Ted, we have assisted in emergency situations. So um, I know one year there was uh, some ivy that was growing by the opening gates. There was so much ivy growing that they couldn't handle it, so we did assist them then. Um, we used to do some mowing, but they've been taking over some more of the mowing on that uh, property, so uh, that's fine. Um, you know, we try to do as much as we can for them, but there's some limitations, obviously, because it's their property. Mark, to go back to the pool for a second, um, I thought I heard you say um, the aquatics revenue was going to go down? The, the aquatics revenue going back to the town. So, uh, in this budget, um, maybe Kelly can explain No, I understand what you're saying about it becoming self-sustaining, <coughs> but I mean, you know, you still have to self-sustain, right? I mean, is it just like... It's not my question. It's leaving the budget. So sure. Yeah. Okay. Like you weren't saying that it's not doing well enough to that like the but the, the incoming finances were were going down. That's not what you're saying. You're never right. you're gonna be giving back to think of it as the opposite. So so yeah. the pool is doing okay. very well. Um, so uh, so now we're going to instead of giving that money back to our general fund, we're going to decrease our ask in terms of expenses. Okay. Pay those expenses using our revenue that we're bringing. And that is the trend currently. We're doing very well with it. Uh, Mark's been able to help out with some other areas because of those ones. Um, but believe me, that the pool is working very well. I would hate to see any uh, change in that because it's now on a positive note instead of where it was years ago. Oh, I did have one more question. Last year we did a tour of the building and yeah. I thought there was some in the yes. Works. Yep, and, and they still are. Uh, so actually, we just completed some improvements to the back room, to the pump room, uh, twenty thousand dollars worth. Uh, and the next step is to, uh, just like you said, the locker rooms. Um, that we we have um, uh, a gentleman who uh, I'm drawing a blank on the construction company name, but uh, he'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks to tour the facility. Uh, he has his company has ample experience in terms of renovating community centers and pools. Uh, and uh, so he's going to recommend some. It's mostly cosmetic. Uh, and, and to be honest, we're only working with uh, their original ask was, I think, $72,000. We just used up 20 for the pump groups. Now we're working with only about $50,000. So it's really going to be cosmetic. Um, so uh, down the road, a couple of years from now, we might have to revisit um, you say the pool is doing, pool revenues are doing well. What did you say the increases versus last year? The difference? Um, well, I don't know if these are the exact numbers that Kelly has, but the numbers that I have. Kelly always has exact numbers. I know, I know. So, <laughs> uh, I'll let her. So, yeah, as of right now, I have. We budgeted seventy-five thousand for pool revenue. Right now, we're at sixty-five. So we only have um, about nine thousand three hundred left to collect for the year. And this is through. I don't even know if this is through March. I don't think this is through March because I didn't reconcile my credit cards yet. Right. So. So this is through February. And what was your number for this 65. year? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Okay. So my numbers um, are similar. Um, and, and like you said, you may not have records. Yeah, I didn't records on the credit cards. So uh, fiscal year 2021 to 2022, um, the number I have is, uh, we'll just round up to 80,000. It's 79,000 and change. Uh, to date, um, I have, so for this fiscal year, again, keep in mind we have two and a half months, uh, we've already exceeded 80,000. So we're at 80,600. So, versus a budget of 75. Correct. You have the records in March, yet, so you still have five more months to go. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Thank you.
you very much. All right. Thank you. I was. Ron Derby, the Chief Highway Department. Um, this year's budget, two percent increase, and that's all contractual increases for the reason in our budget uh, currently. So you know we're currently in the process of getting the good prices for updating. Um, this past winter we've done a lot of pre-trimming and pre-taking down roads. Um, there's still a lot more to do. So we're working on that. Uh, projects as I mentioned earlier, the auction. We have approximately 13 vehicles up here between the town departments that we're auctioning off. Uh, this old table, old chairs, there's some eviction stuff up there that we've had, um, full pieces of equipment. So we have a, a fair sized lot of uh, things that we're going to auction off up there. Do you still utilize Paul for your mechanic or do you have your own guy? Paul is the police mechanic. Well, right. utilize Paul if our mechanic is not there okay. and we have an emergency, we need to fix something. Right. And, and vice versa with us. There's cooperation there. Yes, it's vice versa with us. Like Paul was out with surgery and a while back okay. and we fill, our mechanic filled in for that. Yep, same thing. Good. How many guys do you have? Right now, there's 10. One is currently out on, on top. So we're down to nine right now. How about the equipment? You must run through some of that stuff. I want to thank you people in the Finance Board because you purchased us uh, in Kevin Kelly, uh, two F-250s about a year and a half ago, we had F-350, which we just took delivery of back in January, right? So when yeah, what do you utilize that for? All kinds of daily, daily okay. yeah, all kinds of daily stuff, and much appreciated. Thank you very much. Yeah. You guys go help me. Other questions? All I can say. <laughs> We've had a good winter. Can't complain about the winter. Or as far as well, our overtime is, we didn't use a lot of overtime, so. You know what come on drive is? Yes, I do, Ted. Yeah, that, that circle up there, you guys own that other place? I don't think we own that. Huh? What do you mean, the inside the circle? Yeah, you know, you go up there, yeah, the road yeah. you go around. Yeah, the cold sack. There's a circle in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys uh, We've maintained that before. We've been up there, we've cut yeah, that back. Yeah, I know, but said uh, you, you owned it and somebody told me you didn't. But I don't I'd have to look at the map if we own it. I'm not sure, Ted, but we have done work up there. Yeah, we've trimmed it back and stuff. Yeah, yeah I know I that. See it. Well maintained. Yeah. yeah. So, yep, we've done that. Okay. More questions? Um, on your refuse disposal, is that paid on a monthly or quarterly basis or annual basis? Monthly. Monthly. Paid on a monthly? monthly. How are we going to be able to put the rest of the year with that? Uh, we will come back to you with, as requested, a line item transfer for the things you mentioned tonight. Um, so we think it should be just one more time with the line item transfers to cover those things that are short or getting close. Um, if we're budgeted at 1650 for that, we're running really tight. Should we, I hate to ask this question, but should we increase this line item? Hold on a second. What's today's date and time? Because I want to mark in the calendar that a board of finance member said increase it. <laughs> well, you didn't say that. He was asking. They make sure you put the right name down there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ask that question. How much? <laughs> I'll tell you at the end. Okay, you just take that out of the town budget. Don't expect too much. I'm, I'm, just, no, I'm just wondering, who takes care of that parking lot across from the high school? That, uh, that, it's, that it's town property. What do you mean by, can you give a better definition of taking care of? Paving, specifically. Well, we had a plan to pave it a long time ago, but we also had recently had a plan about if the annex was to come down and put up a pavilion. We still have that plan in place. Mm -hmm. I think that might be much better because I know it's a washboard. You just drive through it and you, it's going to hit, your shock's going to be hitting all the time. But we'd like to be able to expand it, make it bigger, um, and obviously flatten it out, but also do it the right way with uh, water, uh, like runoff being done right. So. It's, a, it's in the plans. It's the range for the oh, plan. Well, can you tell us how much you like to put into it? Right? I'm just asking. I mean, I was so on that every day for kids. They're coming off my kids. So, and you're right. It's not something that's forgotten, believe me. We know that it needs to get uh, accomplished. 
sometimes when you look at the cost, how much to do the proper thing with proper drainage, expand it out because we did look at see how much uh, land we actually have. Pretty much all this is the railroad tracks, but you can't can't cave everything. So we're looking at a plan to do it. And people from stuff back here too in the past. Just figure that out. Any other questions? Or you want to uh, I do have one. You said you had uh, you said ten employees. Does that include yourself? Yes. Okay. And you have one out on Kong. Yes. Do you anticipate that person back anytime soon? Am I allowed to ask that question? You can't ask that, can't ask that question. You can't ask that. Strike that. Okay. okay. Um, and how long have you been working with them? Almost 27 years. 27 of July. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. All right. At this time, we'll uh, welcome the first selectman back to the podium. So you do have a few things that are there that aren't listed here, but you want to just talk about those two, which are town general and capital? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just start. Well, let's start with town general. The new um, contract with our new phone system, for those who don't know, our phone system <laughs> have a proper software backup. So if they ever went down, we don't get anything back. So we're looking and did look to find a different company to come in to be replaced. So um, with that, uh, you'll see the item there for our engineering firm. The next one up is 37000 We did a contract with NECOG to use their services there. Um, I can tell you whether it's the employees that are behind me or whether it's the employees that we're looking at here. You can't find people for the numbers that the Plainfield offers. Uh, like we talked about before, when uh, Rick was going to retire, finding somebody for Rick and replacing him for that salary number is almost ridiculous. You can't do it. Um, there are a couple towns that drive there, by the way. Um, I'm not going to name names, Wyndham. Um, but they actually are much higher than ours. Yeah, much higher. Well, I got you. Yep. Yeah. Rick's retired. But. Uh... This kind of stuff talks, you know. Yeah. Have you offered him something? Well, again, from, he wants to retire. Does does <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe you give him the right number. I, I can't discuss that outside of contract negotiations. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so we have an engineering firm for thirty-seven thousand. That's very, very inexpensive, and they do um, they do what we ask them to. Uh, we could use another engineer, obviously, but we just can't find it. Uh, we had the ads out for an engineer, and they're just not coming to the plate. We tried reaching out to um, <clears throat> local colleges, nothing. Is there any job that's, that you can hire somebody, I don't care what the job is? You, you, even our teachers, can you get teachers? That's difficult. Across that's the board, saying, so, so there is no job that anybody is knocking on the door saying, I want a job. Across the board, we're low. On almost everything, from what I've seen. And you, and you add on to the fact of people not wanting to work. That's the other problem. There, in other words, the people are available, but they just don't want to get too many handouts? There's every company around us that has the same issue. Okay. Uh, legal, we're going to leave alone at 110. Uh, same thing with postage. We're not making any changes there. Uh, we are adding some more computer line items. There's more contractual things we have to do for Office 365 and other computers to be updated. Um, I think the three oldest computers in the town hall right now are Marianne, yours, mine, and Kyle's. Uh, mine, if you go to my office, you can hear the airplane going up and down because it's the, the uh, fan keeps on going on. So yeah, they do need upgrading. Um, same numbers for probate. By the way, we asked, um, you'll get to the other pages here, but basically we did ask if they wanted to increase, they were fine with what we have right now for probate. Um, copy machines, same number for the contract. County roads, that's what we get from the state numbers, so that's the same. Uh, claims we leave as is right now, we're fine. Uh, contingency up a little bit only because the price of repairs and the price of things to be replaced, that's why I went up 10. Um, tax refunds, we've been pretty good. He was a 
a struggle for those people who listen to the Board of uh, Selectmen meetings at the beginning of the meeting, you usually have the first item on the agenda, and that's tax refunds. Um, there, we saw a trend for a while, which was when people wanted to keep their cars that they were leasing, they wanted to keep it so that the lease company got the money back. So that was brings back the tax refunds. So that's why you saw those for a while. Um, that was uh, COVID driven as well, because you couldn't find cars. Um, we had a little increase for the fireworks. We still anticipate doing the same thing for that weekend with DJ Parade, doing fireworks again. Uh, oh, uh, US flags cost. When I put this together, the cost was that, and now it's almost double. So if you're trying to go out to a company to buy flags, whether the flag poles you put up on um, telephone poles or the ones for the Craig site, they're ridiculously priced right now, so they're way out there. Um, you see the reduction for outdoor restroom and sound system. We anticipate getting, hopefully getting somebody soon to uh, come out to do a little work with us to see if they can help us out with that. But um, outdoor restroom is part of the plan for the Lions Park. So that's why the numbers are there. Uh, well, last item on there is kind of an interesting one. Um, the police video screen. Um, I think they need a sign of some sort. Um, Should that be cheaper because the demolition was done already? <laughs> um, <laughs> the other problems we have over the other problems we have over there, we also don't know if we're going to get insurance re recovery from that as all. Uh, I don't think so. But anyways, yeah, that's what we're looking to do. Any questions on the general tap? Um, yeah, you put in for an increase on the contingency. Mm -hmm. But we are way underspent this year, so for right now, are we anticipating that number jumping as significantly if we put the end of the fiscal? Well, year? I can tell you right now, we also have legal fees which have gone up. Their prices went up by about oh boy, 20, 25 per. That's one of the issues. Um, so it'll be a little short this year for that. Again, line on the transfer at the end of the year. Uh, and the other things for contingency, uh, we do have some other legal issues that are still outstanding. Uh, for our attorney, partner labor related, so those things could be utilized from that. You never know what you're going to get with contingency. It could be anything from uh, a breakdown of a, uh, a highway truck or, or something that has occurred during the year or legal issues of, uh, on top of what you normally have. So that's why it's probably best to keep it uh, just to the uh, $10,000 increase. Uh, what is the status on the outdoor restroom and the sound system? Well, we're still working on putting that plan together to bring to the, uh, at this point, to bring to planning zoning. Uh, we're still in that process. Uh, we have one more piece to finish, and that is um, we are looking for finality on the ownership of the parcel, which is to the, that be, be the west, and going towards the actual uh, uh, lagoon area or the Elbrook itself. Uh, so we think we'll, we'll be all set with that in a few a few months and go forward. So that's where that is. Okay. Any other questions? And what was the other area? I'm sorry. What was the other area you wanted to go? The um, capital. So you have the, um, by the way, these, most of these numbers are things that come, um, I shouldn't say most, but some of these numbers are actually things that are designated from the state, uh, whether it's low SIP, what they give us. Uh, the next one down is a new telephone system for the financial purchase. That's what we have to put out there for that. Um, Revals, we do that every year, where we schedule those out. Uh, it's, it's something we we're looking to change from using the uh, NECOG reval to doing our own in the future. She, uh, the assessor likes those uh, to be done in-house. So we do put some money aside for that every year. Um, there's again grants for the municipal project for the state funded, that's 144, same as before. And um, we're trying to be conservative with building repairs. And again, you never know what you have for the end of the end of the day. But that's what we're trying to do, keep that zero going on. So the only increase you see is really the new purchase of the new town hall uh, phone system.
Yeah, uh, uh, unless there are any other questions, I'd like to talk a little bit about the fund balance. You want to stay up here for this one? Sorry. Yeah. We're really trying to not use the last, uh, take a look at the last page of the fund balance. Uh, just for clarification, what the fund balance is, is um, that you're doing the one purchase using fund balance funds, so it's not part of the actual budget, but we want to talk about the uses right now. Uh, you, you asked earlier about the highway department, is there anything they use for vehicles? Absolutely, one of the vehicles is, um, needs to be replaced. So what we decided to do, instead of asking you for the full amount of the monies to purchase that, we're going to lease it for three years, and that way it keeps that number down. So it's $100,000 under the balance for that one uh, item. We want to make sure we do continue on with our road repair. So we have 300000 listed in there. Um, we were talking about the um, $75,000 that we wanted to put in to continue with the park, because that would need some more work at the uh, after July. And there was a $75,000 for recreation. Um, recreation would like to be able to do more, and he's mentioned that before, he'd like to do a lot more projects. Um, but he'd like to do some studies to make sure that what we're looking to do is appropriate. Um, he was putting up $75,000 as a request. So um, that's where we are with the fund balance. I don't want to continue taking money from the fund balance. We want to keep it healthy. I'm not sure my uh, calculations, last time I calculated, if you take a look, and I don't want to mix this up, but if you take a look in the current budget that you're working with, you'll notice those first two page, pages from state revenue and town revenue. At one point, we were about almost seven hundred thousand dollars above. So that means your uh, available rainy day fund or your reserve funds closer to twenty to twenty-one percent at that point. But you don't want to continue using that money to spend on certain things. But we're trying to be conservative here with what we're approaching the town. Uh, we're financed with it at this point. But you don't want to keep on using all those monies. You don't want to have big chunks taken away. But there are some monies available, and that's why we're looking to do that. What, what is the current fund balance? Nine. I want to say it's nine point three million. Nine point two three. Okay. That's on a side. And again, the revenue lines that you looked at from the last couple of months, as you're going, you know, month by month through your board meetings, to take a look and take a look at the numbers again for the uh, state and local revenues and uh, our tax collector. She's still here. No, but her sister is. Okay. So, 98% at this point of the year is really good. And, and again, you saw what was on the board out there. If anybody walks out and takes a look on the right hand side, you see that she's sitting nine more properties that are back taxed. That board is actually full. And so, she's been able to collect all those, which is fantastic. Not all of them, by the way, are town. Uh, they are also, they work with the uh, fire departments as well. So the fire department has a lien on the property based on the fact it's behind. They would put that up there as well. Or it could be both. It could be town and fire department. Doing a great job of collections. That's why you see a larger number for the revenues coming in. What is this 98% thing? Collection? Yeah, why is it, why is it never 98.1, 89.9? Yeah, why is points? it always 98? I'll have her calculate it. Is that you'll allow it to no, collect? No, no, I'll have her calculate it. I think it's exactly to the penny. How far, how far do you want to know? Three decimal points, four. I forgot to ask you that. Why is it 98%? It's never 100, it's never 99. Oh, we've had 102 one year. That's, no. Yeah. Back taxes. Never that she's collected. Back taxes. Uh, yeah, oh, back taxes. I'm oh, sorry, please. she'll never tell you it's any more than she's going to collect 98%. I will like all request, the I'll like re request that she brings you the exact numbers. Okay. Nobody if, cares about it. You want to talk about the other, well, I can't talk much about library. They're, they have a, yeah. a modest increase. They have not had increases so, in the world. This is just salary. Yeah. Uh, we know where you are. <laughs> Always. Uh, do you want to take a few moments and fill us in about the five year capital plan, please? Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, which we'll start with. Um, what are we doing now? Five year capital plan. Is that part of the agenda? <coughs> it does say capital improvement on it. Yep. Okay. Well, 
look, if, if we have a lot of money and yeah, things will great. I'll try to go through this as quick as possible. All right, so you see in the five-year capital what we had is uh, we'd love to be able to do more with the Christmas displays for Lions Park. I put down 75000 Again, it depends on what the budget looks like. I can move that down further out. Town Hall sprinklers, uh, we have to make sure that we test and keep up to date on our Town Hall sprinkler. They did a test today, and we actually did very, very good. So. Um, we do have to keep on doing those tests, though. So we're, this is the second half of those tests. That's why 9,000 is there. Um, we'd love to do the windows for downstairs. This building has not had a replacement for some of the downstairs windows ever. So that would be our, our <coughs> savings as well, not energy. Uh, $100,000 is listed for the front ramp, and that means that we are, do not have an ADA compliant front ramp. The, per, the percentage of the pitch is too high. So you can also see it starting to crumble and break out. But we want to plan properly, and that's what we think we can get for replacement or modifications. Public works, again, that was the 350 Mason dump truck. It's not going to be 275, it would be 100,000 per three year period. So that's why we at least posted it there. And again, the $300,000 was from your uh, fund balance for the road repair and uh, paving. He would love to have a wood chipper, and that's why he has it listed here. Um, we were fortunate enough this year, he was able, we were able to find some money for him to, you've got a new uh, water tank. Yes. Which works great. Instead of the sieve you had before, which everything poured in, put it right like a spaghetti strainer. Yep. Um, a police station, you see what's listed there, Tahoe's. You've already had a meeting with the um, police department already. Um, the evidence shed is another thing uh, I think I want to mention really quickly. Um, that hundred thousand dollars for the evidence shed was for the first part. I think you heard in that meeting the other thirty-three is for um, insulation and HVAC. And that's what this is right here. Uh, they also talked about the HVAC inside the building that needs to be replaced. That's why the fifteen is there. Um, animal control. I'm not sure which version you have, but animal control had a couple thousand dollars on it for painting. We're already doing that this year. So that was, that's why that's taken off. Lions Park improvements, only because we're going to continue on from this fiscal year to the next fiscal year. So you see 75000 there. Parks and properties, Quinnebog River Trail. So correct me if I'm wrong, how much money do we have to pay for that? It says here, 273 No, the town does not have to pay anything. They just want to see it in the budget. Yep. That is a DOT funded. 20% match with the federal. Yep, so it's five-year capital required just to show it. Um, Shepherd Hall sidewalks, 20,000. And I can't answer for anything on the school department, so. I do want to mention a couple other things I want you to keep in mind. We're putting together a budget for this coming year, but there's some things that you should be aware of that would impact possibly next year and definitely in the following year. One of the things I wanted to mention was, well, you mentioned already the 75000 for the rec department. We also mentioned um, the, uh, we, I mean, we didn't mention it. We got a notification today that the 5310, which is a grant for uh, elderly and disabled bus that they use, and they said they use it almost every day, to go between one and the other. Um, the state of Connecticut, we've been waiting for about 19 months, 18, 19 months, for that new vehicle. We apply for and receive a, okay, we're going to get it. The state, uh, the federal uh, government just told us that Ford dealership, which had a contract with it, pulled out because the cost of vehicles really raised up tremendously. So now that 5310 van is not coming because they're non existent. So we have to reapply for 5310, but it's going to cost us probably another $20,000 we'd have to pay for it. Um, uh, I wanted you to know that there could be a possibility that we could talk about any municipal projects in the town. So uh, whether it's on a town, on town property, we go through the process going in front of planning and zoning for the application, and that would require us to do some extra monies for whether you're hiring engineering, um, uh, surveying, things like that, and so that's going to cost more for each project. Um, then the next thing up is MERS. I know you met with the police before. Have you been aware of the uh, states that have worked, the state of Connecticut working on a new plan for pension for the police? Didn't know about that? Oh, you did. Okay. It's, it's a plan that it says you have to go to something equal to or better than MERS. It's, the, it's a pension plan that the state troopers have 
that I think if I looked at my papers correctly, we are talking about, not this year, thank goodness, you never know what the state's going to vote on, but next year, so currently in their budget they have 372212 The following year would add an additional 177000 to that. So now you're looking at 550 roughly, just for their pensions. And that gets worse because if you compound it, you think about what's happening. When they do road duty, that's the impact of that. It's added in that head bill. So when they do the road duty, um, now when their top three years of service are done, they are have that included as a as their salary. Um, I'm not in favor of it. I try to talk to our legislators about it and say that there has to be some sort of compromise. While I know that their uh, pension needs to have some changes in order to be competitive, I didn't feel that would be appropriate to be taking that out of our negotiations because it won't be negotiated anymore. Normally that's what they look for. I would say any union would look for. It. So I uh, just wanted you to be aware. This is a tough year. But with some things, it might be even tougher. Okay? Alright, are there any other questions for the select at this time? Huh? Okay. No, I'm all in. Okay, right. Thank you. No, I want to thank the motion that we accept the presentations of the proposed budgets for the department. And this is an acceptance of the presentation of the proposed budget. So moved. All right. So Second. Motion made by Ted, seconded by John. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? A little, little added. Thank you very much. Fantastic yes. job. Yeah. Appreciate Thank all the time and effort you folks put I'm in. I'm glad I hired all of you people. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, all right. you guys did it. Outstanding. All right, so at this time I will open up the floor to uh, let citizens participation. If there's anybody who would like to uh, present a specific question or comment to the board, uh, again, I would like to, to remind folks that we are in the process of hearing the budgets. Nothing has been approved or decided. Uh, the meeting is yet to come, but if you would like to make a comment, uh, we would certainly welcome and appreciate any input or feedback that we could uh, listen to at this time. All right, Gagney. I have a question on the recreation budget. There's a line item that's park and field maintenance for fifteen thousand. There's also a line item park and maintenance for twenty thousand. You didn't touch on the twenty thousand dollar one. Somebody could explain that. I believe that's a separate copy, so I, I can't necessarily speak to that because it's not on my budget. Kelly, do you know? Uh, it's right under the copier. The other thing is I agree with you about the uh, highway department refuse. Last year, they, they, I think they went over budget on that too, and this year also. So I, I agree with an increase in that probably, the refuse on the highway. And then the only other question I had was the fund balance. It, so with the addition of the 75 for Lions Park and the rec, that's a total of 550000 for fund balance. Correct? Okay. That's it. Insurance and benefits line. 
Is that credit still in effect, or did we use that up? We use that up right now. Okay. Yes. Right. But yes, we did incur that. Thank you. I understand what you're saying, but think about it this way. If, if all that money is not going back into the fund balance, any, any surpluses, our fund balance isn't going to show the numbers we need. We're going to bond for $4 million. We need the best rates we can get, so we need a decent fund balance to get those rates, correct? Kelly? Oh, so what we're going to go to bond for is we have to do a bond anticipating note first, and it's a $4 million, and then we're going to get a grant for a million. So we'll bond, correct. We'll bond with Connecticut Water, maybe $3 million. But doesn't our fund balance play into that rate? Um, the usage of the fund balance plays into that rate. So if we keep using fund balance for operating costs, then that affects our rate. Um, if you're using fund balance, say, for projects, you know, one incurred one-time projects, it doesn't really interpret it. But if okay. I'm using it, like, to fund the pension or to fund um, operating of the town, salaries, that's, that's frowned upon. Yeah, because I always understood that if fund balance is healthy, it yes. affects our bond rate. Yes. So we need to keep our fund balance healthy to help those bonds. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at $4 million for that right now. We're looking at HVAC assistance for the school within the next probably five years. Right. If we can wait that long. Right. So we need to be careful. And like I said, it's a way to hide money. I don't like that idea. I want yeah. everything up front available to the public. Right. And um, we should have slush funds like kicking if around. Any purchases are made out of that account stuff. You still have to follow the procurement policy and stuff. There's no way. We and I'm not that. saying this administration's doing anything wrong, but we don't know what the future is going to hold or who's going to be in those seats. So we got to be careful because we're setting precedents. That's okay. all. If I can respond, uh, I would just like to make one comment about fund balance. Uh, as of the middle of February, our total fund balance was 23.86%, okay? which is uh, we usually look for a three-month runoff. <coughs> That's much greater than a three-month runoff. Our unrestricted uh, was well over $9 million. Um, so our restricted was almost about $2 million. So um, I did look into bond ratings, and I, I, I don't have the paperwork in front of me, but our bond rating at that particular time was the same as New York City's. So I, I think our bond rating is in pretty good shape. It was not at the highest, but it was, it was like, Double, double A something, double A plus. Big A, little A three. Say that again. Big A, capital A, little A three. Right. That's what we are. Uh, and that, that's next, it was the next step down from having the best bond rate possible. So that's right. But it'd be nice to keep that. I'm sorry? It'd be nice to keep that. Yeah. 
well, a little while ago, a year and a half, two years ago, we had it at 12%. Yeah. So we are watching what we're doing. And I would also and, uh, ask that if you were wanting to see what that fund looks like, that the Board of uh, Finance be uh, given an information about that monthly. Right. There's no hiding it. There's no slush fund. There's no, it, it is what it is. And we can actually give that to the public or give that to the Board of Finance monthly. And I, okay. That's what I was asking for whenever we talked about that, because if you look at it, just the number that you when we talked, and it could be off a little bit, you know, you're looking at about $8,800 that should be coming in monthly, and if it caps off at 75, it's okay, where's that extra 26, 27,000 going, you know? So, so I, I get it, it's, it's concerned. So I, I got that written down, you know? Um, so I understand that. So yeah, there's a way to be able to know what comes in, because you don't want it to just sit there and then just be like, oh, hey, we need bleachers, or we need this, and just, just, just take it out. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I get what, what, what Mr. Peterson is saying. You want bleachers? No, I'm not saying that, what I'm saying. <laughs> no. Yeah, the fund balance is something that we reconcile at the end of the year, every year, with the auditors. So I can't give a monthly what the fund balance is. No, no, so but fund balance this particular stays. account, what's yeah, going on. Yes, definitely. And I think, it's, to your point, it kind of plays into positioning ourselves for a better opportunity to apply for grants, too. Exactly. Having that account that's separately identified and showing the revenue stream. All right, thank you. Um, yes, sir. One more question. The and clarification on the rec department budget. I'm sorry, you're Art, one. Art Gagne. No, you need to identify Art Gagne. <laughs> um, so the bottom line on the rec department would be 485,423 with an increase of 53,926. Am I correct? No. I just took the 20,000 off that you said is. You might have that okay. Might have outdated numbers. Yeah. These, unfortunately, I was following. I followed along with it. The total amount I have, we have here is five hundred eight thousand one eighty. Is that what you're asking? The total budget. Well, that's what I had original. This, that's that's original. Which isn't right. It should be this, but I scrapped that off of it. Cause, so then the twenty thousand. Where does that come from? The park and maintenance twenty thousand worth. That wasn't. Discussed, the fifteen thousand was the twenty thousand wasn't. I don't see it in here, so I would we'd probably have to add this up to see if it comes in the same balance or the same total. Well, uh, but I, I'm not seeing. I guess something really outdated. This is it right here. So then you can just see what's exactly that'll map up. Yeah. I see what I'm missing. Okay, thank you. say that the unfortunate part about budget season is I started this when I was first requested to do so, mm -hmm. and things change. Um, I, I mentioned earlier tonight, you know, I got an email about the 5310. Now I'd like to know what I'd be able to put that into the budget so we can offset the, the, the loss of those revenues, a loss of the um, needs to come up with the difference. So again, it changes every day. Yeah, but Kelly's been good though in between each one of these budget meetings with this update. She'll send us an email saying, here's the most up-to-date one, because in just a week's time, we've seen change. Yeah, like today. And this board can change when necessary. Okay. We understand that the costs go up and depending on the year, how bad. Uh, what was gasoline in Lusuf, I think, was uh, where I go, was 28 cents a gallon versus last year. And the world changes every day. Um, the highway so, department no, mentioned. I didn't budget for that. The highway department mentioned to you that they got three vehicles. Pennies. Two came, how late were they? Nine months? About a year ago. Yeah. And just got the other one just a few months ago. It's this one here. Yeah. It's not on here. Are there any other this, questions? This. It's 27. Anyone else would like to address the board? So moved. Second. 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 Second.